All right, time to wrap up unit one and do some review and take a test to show off all you know here. All right, so uh, let's look at some problems here. Uh, one thing we talked about here was angles. So here we got an angle BAD and angle AC, or sorry, ray AC. That's an angle bisector. So we want to draw a diagram first here. So we've got uh, B, A, D. Remember the, the middle letter in an in a in a angle is the uh, vertex. And then we've got A, C. That is the angle bisector there. All right. Now we know that B, A, D is 84 degrees. That's given to us here. And we know that C, A, B is 2x plus 20, all right? Now we know this is an angle bisector, so I'm gonna mark these as congruent. And CAB, that's this guy right here, is 2x plus 20. Well, since this is an angle bisector, we know that that's half of it. So you can do this a couple ways. We can say that, well, half of 84 is 42. So we could say 2x plus 20 equals 42, or we could say 84, the total degrees, is two times that expression 2x plus 20. All right, so two ways to go. You'll get the same answer either way. Uh, let's try this guy here, subtract 20. 2x equals uh, 22, divide by two, and x is 11, all right? You get the same thing if you solve this guy, 84 equals distribute, all right, and then subtract 40, and then divide by 4, and we get the same answer. Great. Now, uh, we want to find the measure of CAD. That's our ultimate goal. So CAD, well, that's just the other angle here, right? So CAD, that wasn't given to us, but we know that that's an angle bisector, so these two are the same. So we can plug in 11 to that expression, 2x plus 20. And so 2 times 11 plus 20 gives us 22 plus 20, which is 42. Uh, <laughs> well, we could have kind of gotten that from the original, right? So measure of angle CAD uh, is just going to be 42 degrees. So I guess we didn't need to plug that in. It's just half of 84. All right. Well, moving on. Number two here, we got point M as the midpoint of LN. So we're going to want to draw a diagram of this. So we've got a line. I get a little line for us here. There's a line, and this is L, and it's a line segment. Remember, when there's no bars on it, that means line segment. So L, N, all right? And then we've got a midpoint here, M, okay? So this is a midpoint. I'm going to put these marks showing that that's exactly in the middle. All right, so now uh, we know that the whole thing is 10x, and we know mn is 4x plus 10. So two times the mn, 4x plus 10, because mn is just half of it. So we have to double that to get the whole. So the, the two parts add up to the whole is the key there. All right, so this is only half, so we gotta double this to get this, and we gotta build our equation that way. Now, it's all algebra. So distribute 8x plus 20. Let's subtract the 8x from both sides. And 20 equals 2x. And if we divide that by two, we get x equals 10. By the way, x is not always a whole number, so don't expect it to be so, all right? Uh, ln is I'll just fix that, which just happened there. Okay, so LN is 10X, so we can take what we found there, the 10, and let's plug that in, so LN. Now, by the way, notice there's no bar over this. That means the length of LN. This means the length of MN. Don't forget that. So LN is 10 times X, which is 10 
times, well, we just found out that x is 10, which is 100. And there's the length of ln. Okay. Great. Well, uh, now let's move on to some midpoints. We, we learned that the midpoint was the average, all right? So if we have um, two points, and we could graph them and just kind of use slope to get this. That's, that's one way to go. Uh, but um, we want to find two things. We want to find PQ. Now, that doesn't mean, say, PQ. There it is. Notice there's no bar. That means the length of PQ. Okay. So we want to find the length of PQ and uh, the coordinates of the midpoint. All right. So um, two parts. Length. Uh, we could graph this and use the Pythagorean theorem. That would be fine. So you could sketch it out and say uh, 3, negative 12 is somewhere down here. There's like Q. And then negative 7, 15, well, that's going to kind of be way over here, negative 7, 15 for P. And you could think about, so there, there's our line, not a very straight line. But uh, then we could think about the rise and the run. You can count that out, and you could use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? Uh, totally fine way to go. All right? Uh, but it's going to take a little, little, bit, little, little bit of thought there. But let's try the distance formula. I'm going to go with the distance formula here. Distance formula is really just the Pythagorean theorem because we've got x2 minus x1 squared, which is like the a squared y2 minus y1 squared, that's like the b squared. And so let's, let's plug these in. All right, let's take our x's, which is 3 and negative 7. Watch out for those negatives. We've got the y's, which is uh, negative 12 minus 15. A little careful again with your minus and your negatives. And so this becomes, well, 3 minus negative 7, that's like plus, so that's going to be 10 squared, which is going to be, we can figure that out in a second. This is going to be negative 27 squared. Oh, boy. That's one I don't know off the top of my head. So uh, now we can keep going. So that's going to be the square root of 100 plus... And this comes out to be 729 is the square root of 20 or 27 squared. So this is the square root of 8, 7, 8, 29. All right. <clears throat> I don't think that's a perfect square. If we plug it out, plug it in, it's uh, about 28.79. All right, so, so there's the length of the line segment. Now if we want to find the midpoint, the midpoint is the average of the coordinates. So we're going to take those two coordinates and we're going to average them. Okay, So to find the x-coordinate of the midpoint, we're going to average negative 7 plus 3 divided by 2. That's negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. The y-coordinate is 15 plus negative 12 divided by 2, which is going to be 3 divided by 2, which is 3 halves. Leave it alone. Fractions are great. So there's our coordinates of the midpoint. And so we get our midpoint at negative 2, 3 halves. If you really want to make that 1.5, you can, but you want to stay away from those decimals if possible. All right, so there's that, distance and midpoint. So now if we have a different situation, we've got a midpoint of RS is at 4, 2. Now a little picture might be helpful here. So we have RS as a line segment, and we know at 4, 2 is the midpoint. And that's a funny point. Then one of the endpoints is at 7, negative 12. So 7, negative 12, well, that's somewhere down here. Okay, probably farther down, but this is just a model. 
So four, seven, negative 12. And so there's an S that we're looking for somewhere up here. So this is a line segment. That's the midpoint. We'll go the same distance up here, and there's S. Okay, my drawing is not to scale because I ran out of room down here. So, uh, but that's the idea. I want to find that. Well, uh, we can use some patterns. And if you look carefully at the patterns, you can kind of figure out this guy's going from 7 to 4. That's going down 3, so we're going to go down 3, so on and so forth. The, the very important thing is that we call S X comma Y. Okay, so that's really important there. Okay, so call it X comma Y. And then the best way to do this uh, when you have uh, uh, big numbers like this is to just make the average. We know that this 4 is the average of these two numbers. 4 is the average. Now, how do we find an average? We average by adding and dividing by 2. So these two, added and divided by 2, x plus 7 divided by 2, has to equal 4, right? That's the midpoint formula. So here's a simple equation, and we can solve it. Times 2 on both sides, and we're going to get 8 equals x plus 7. Subtract 7, that's easy. x is 1. So there's our x coordinate. Now what do we know about the y coordinates? So this 2 is the average of y and negative 12. So we know that 2 is the average of our mystery y value and negative 12. Average means add and divide by 2. And we can solve that pretty quickly. Double, double. Okay, 4 equals y minus 12. Add 12 to both sides. And we get y equals 16. Okay, so the final answer is our coordinates is that uh, S is at 1, 16. That's the answer right there. Okay? The midpoint is the average. That's the key. Remember, the midpoint is the average of the coordinates. So now we've got some block buildings. Let's do some patterns here, kind of like we did in green face cubes. All right, we've got three block buildings. How many squares will be in the next three figures is the question, all right? So, uh, well, okay, we see that the, the block building is growing. We have one here, we have four, we have uh, two, four, six, seven there, all right? So we can kind of see that the pattern is going up by three every time. So the next three will be 10, 13, and 16. Now, the pattern is going up by 3. You can, you can do this a couple ways. Since the pattern is going up by 3, this is a linear pattern. And so linear patterns, uh, the, the slope, the rate of change is 3. So since we're going up by 3 every time, that's an indicator right there that uh, so on and so forth going up by 3. So that tells us our formula is going to be 3 times n plus or minus something, okay? And if we test this out, 3 times 1 is 3, but we want 1. So we're going to have to subtract 1. Subtract 2, actually, right? 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract 2 to get 4. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract 2 to get 7, all right? So it's going to turn out to be 3n minus 2. Now, another way to see this would be we might look at this and say, you know what? I see, I see like a center piece on each of these. And here we've got these legs around the side. This is a leg of one. There's three legs and there's one apiece. Here there's three legs and there's two apiece. Next one's going to have three legs and it's three apiece. Notice that these little legs, let's call them legs, is one less than the, the building number. So we could say... Another way to do this would be to say I have the one centerpiece plus we have three legs. And how many are in each leg? 
n minus 1. And that formula would be equivalent. All right? So two ways to do the same kind of thing there. Okay. Cruising along. Collinear points. So collinear points have the same slope. So if we use these two points here, we're going to get a slope of 6 minus 12 over 4 minus negative 6. And that's going to be negative 6 over 10, which is negative 3 fifths. Okay, so the slope is negative 3 fifths. Now, if we look at these other two points here, we know the slope, let's find the slope there. We have um, 6 minus negative 12 all over 4 minus x. So that has to be negative 3 fifths. And that's the key. So these slopes have to be the same. Well, let's clean this up a little bit here. So this is 6 plus 18, which is, uh, we can do that, I think. 6 plus 18 is, uh, sorry, 6 plus 12 is 18. What am I thinking? All over 4 minus x. This is now a proportion. And so we can cross multiply this. Okay, so let's cross multiply. We learned that in algebra. We have 5 times 18, that's 50, and 40, that's 90. And then we've got uh, 3 times 4 minus x, that's negative 12, plus 3x. Add 12 to both sides, and we get 102. And then divide by 3, and 3 goes into 99, 33 times. And so this would be, what, 34. So x is 34. x is 34. Okay, there you have it. All right, let's cruise on to the next page.